arm, we will shift to the something more of life. Such as energy, for example. As you, can see, as you will see from the title of the next presentation. By Sakova. Please share your oh, sorry. presentation. Yeah, and um, so you can see from the title of this precious presentation will be related to LG their behavior in, in bioreactor. <laughs> Please. Okay. Uh, thank you for a nice introduction. I hope there will be enough life in my presentation. Uh, so good morning again. My name is Simona and I would like to share with you the main results from my dissertation focused on harvesting of microalga chlorella vulgaris with the use of electrocoagulation. Uh, first of all, I would like to tell you briefly uh, something about microalgae production in general and explain you our motivation why we decided to work on this topic. Uh, then I'll explain you the principle of electrocoagulation methods which we used for microalgae harvesting and in the end I'll move on the results of uh, laboratory scale experiments and the parametric study I made in laboratory scale and also show you a few results from the process scale-up. Uh, this is the scheme of the whole production of dry biomass of microalgae. Uh, so firstly, microalgae are cultivated in so-called photobioreactors, which can be open or closed. Uh, and after autotrophic production of microalgae in these uh, reactors, we are usually reaching quite a low concentration of cells, uh, usually around half of gram of dry biomass per liter. After cultivation, there is a separation step uh, to separate the cells from culture medium, which is in case of microalgae called harvesting. And then in case of chlorella, which served us as a model organism for this study, uh, the cells have to be also disintegrated to be digestible, and then they are dried. Uh, it was estimated that almost half of the total production cost uh, is made up uh, just by the cost of separation step. So this is the reason why we focused mainly on this part of the, of the process, and we aimed to develop a new and more efficient method for microalgae harvesting. Uh, the problem is that chlorella cells are very small and they form a stable colloidal suspension with a density close to the density of water. So any conventional method as filtration or flotation for the separation of cells is uh, inapplicable in this case. Uh, for this reason, we decided to try to pre-concentrate the suspension prior centrifugation uh, and for this, uh, for this goals, we chose to use electrocoagulation methods, uh, which in the end helped us to save almost 90% of uh, total energy consumed during separation. Uh, here's the basic principle of electrocoagulation. Uh, so during electrocoagulation, uh, there are formatted uh, aggregates called flux. Uh, in our case, in microalgal suspensions, uh, they are formatted from uh, microalgal cells, which have a negatively charged surface. And uh, because we wanted to ensure that our separated biomass will be still food grade, uh, we decided to use iron anodes uh, for the separation. Uh, so our separated biomass is not contaminated, for example, by aluminium. Uh, so the main, uh, the, the first part of the process is electrolysis, during which the coagulants are uh, released from the sacrificial anode to the medium. Uh, then the aggregates are made from uh, the cells and these coagulants, and in the end they separate, uh, they sedimentate and could be separated. 
And now let's move on the results uh, from uh, laboratory scale experiments. Uh, where our main target was to uh, define uh, the influence of the most important process parameters for electrocoagulation. And uh, we compared the uh, effect of these parameters on the basis of these three quantities. The most important was the efficiency of separation, which we calculated in the basis of uh, dry biomass concentration prior and after uh, the process of coagulation. And other parameter I monitored was also iron content in uh, the separated biomass, for which I set a limit to three milligrams of iron per one gram of uh, dry biomass of chlorella. And this was calculated on the basis of uh, recommended daily intake for iron and chlorella for a uh, human being. And uh, in relevant cases, we compared uh, the influence of parameters also on the basis of energy consumption. Uh, so first and one of the most important parameters was uh, charge concentration, which is uh, a key uh, electric uh, quantity, uh, which determines the uh, amount of coagulant in our system. And for charge concentration, I determined the critical concentration to reach high separation efficiency to be approximately 15 coulombs per liter. Uh, then I focused on the effect of initial biomass concentration of the suspension. And here I was able to reach a high separation efficiency and at the same time, uh, low energy consumption and acceptably low contamination of separated biomass by iron uh, in quite a wide region uh, of dry biomass concentration from 0 0.6 to 1.8 approximately, which are at the same time industrially relevant harvesting densities for microalgae. And uh, the biggest challenge uh, was uh, to optimize the parameter of agitation. Uh, because if the agitation rate during aggregation part of electrocoagulation was uh, too low, uh, the probability of effective uh, cell and coagulant collisions uh, was uh, too low too. Uh, so the, the efficiency was, uh, uh, was decreased. Uh, but if the, if the agitation rate was too high, uh, the flux uh, were destroyed by high shear stress and again, the efficiency of the process uh, was low. So for this reason, we decided to, uh, to use uh, three model devices for electrocoagulation in continuous regime on bench scale. Uh, and these devices differ mainly in the way of agitation. The first one uh, was a pneumatically agitated reactor, uh, which worked quite well for, uh, in terms of separation efficiency. Uh, but unfortunately, the iron content in separated biomass was too high. Uh, then I used fluidus bed reactor, uh, where even after quite extensive optimization of process parameters, I was not able to get below the target limit, and uh, the, uh, the iron contamination exceeded more than 30 times uh, the SIP value. Uh, and finally, the third device was a uh, channel flow reactor uh, with a submerged perforated plate. And uh, in this device, I was finally able to reach uh, high separation efficiency. And at the same time, I was below my target limit for iron contamination of the biomass. So based on these results uh, in bench scale devices, we decided to design and construct a pilot scale electrofloculation device which we can see here. Uh, the working volume of this device were, uh, was uh, 110 liters. Uh, we see that the electrolytic aggregation and uh, separation part are integrated here into one unit. Uh, this device is operating under a continuous uh, regime. And so uh, to determine the hydraulic characteristic, I measured the residence time distribution, as we can see here. So the flow in this reactor is uh, closer to dispersed plug flow than to the ideal mixture. And it can be quite nicely described by axial dispersion model. Um, there are two main uh, mixing effects in this reactor. The first one is uh, the pneumatic agitation of the reactor in the aggregation part, 
uh, from the bottom of the uh, of, uh, of this channel. And the second is the flow of microalgal suspension itself uh, through these perforated perforated webs. Uh, so here I was able to uh, reach both of my targets, high efficiency and at the same time, acceptably low iron contamination of biomass. Uh, this is the photo of this device, which is now protected by the utility model. And to sum up uh, the main points of my dissertation, I proved that uh, electrocoagulation is a suitable method for harvesting of chlorella vulgaris. And we proved this concept also uh, in a pilot scale continuous device. And using this method, we were able to uh, achieve uh, the energy savings of more than 80% compared to uh, standardly used centrifugation. And thank you very much for your attention. That was everything for me. And if you have any questions, I'll be pleased to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments from the audience? So I will start. Uh, so in the final product, uh, in the final biomass, yeah. you have some concentration of iron. So well, what is the average, let's say, average concentration of the uh, of the iron? Uh, the you mean product? using the final, uh, yeah, final pilot scale device? Yes. Uh, well, uh, it's depended on the many factors, uh, but uh, I usually get around one gram of milligram. Uh, of iron per uh, one gram of dry biomass. Uh -huh. is, Which is, is yeah, so th there is some limit? Uh, well, it's not in legislation, but no. if we want to sell our biomass, yeah. uh, we want it to be food grade. Mm -hmm. uh, so, because uh, chlorella is usually uh, sold as a food supplement, so we didn't want to exceed uh, the limit of iron contamination uh, highway. So like we calculated it from the recommended daily intake of iron, that it's not like you know 10 times higher in one tablet of the mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Next question. Also question on the iron content. You have seen different experimental configuration and you reach different level of iron for yeah. the physical uh yeah uh well uh, the, uh yeah the iron content is linked to the charge concentration we have to use for the process because the the higher the charge concentration is the higher content of iron will probably in the separated biomass so if the if the process was well optimized and uh we could use quite a low charge concentration to separate uh, our biomass with high efficiency, we were able to get below this limit for iron. Somehow connected with the, with the shape of the, the Yeah, also shape and the agitation. Is there any reason to use the stainless steel iron? No. Or just because uh, you mean the, the cathode? Uh, yeah, we just want, uh, like you, you can use another type. Uh, we just uh, wanted to ensure that the anode is from uh, from iron, but yeah, we we just use stainless steel as the only option. But there are many other common, of them. Yeah. It's a common and mm -hmm. cheap. Thank you. Any other question? Right. Uh, I would like to ask about the aggregation. Is it spontaneous, uh, or do you add some agent? Uh, well, after we add the coagulant agents during electrolysis, uh, you have to ensure uh, some properties, uh, mainly the agitation, because if you if you want uh, mix during the aggregation part, the cells won't uh, won't form at all. And uh, the velocity is a key parameter of uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. Is, is it possible to somehow control the process? Uh, yeah, by the agitation rate. Okay. okay. Other questions, comments? If not, I'd like to say again. We are moving to the other topic, the case concerning the up to date 
serious environmental problems such as microplastics in water environment. Sorry, yes. And so the title of the next speech is What Happens to Microplastics in Nature? And with this these research activities will be presented by Ms. Pachlova. The floor is yours. Good afternoon. Oh, sorry. Uh, good morning, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, dear committee. Thank you for introduction. And today I'm going to talk about microplastic and studying their destiny in nature. Uh -huh. Okay. Some problem. Oh, okay, it works. Yeah. So I would like to begin by short introduction. In the last few decades, uh, uh, there is a huge increase in production and consumption of plastic goods. Simultaneously with uh, these uh, increasing of using plastics, uh, there is an uncontrollable environmental pollution. Uh, plastics occurs in environment can be divided into several groups uh, based on their size. We are uh, we focused on the last group, uh, microplastics. It's small particles of polymer with non-uniform size, uh, non-uniform shape and size uh, between this interval. Uh, microplastics uh, are divided into primary microplastics. Uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, these plastics are formed during the industrial production in the in the sorry, in the size uh, between this uh, interval and the se secondary microplastics. Uh, it is uh, there are results of uh, biological. Uh, chemical and physical degradation by fragmentation and degradation of large uh, plastic material. Uh, however, there is a problem that in most uh, studies uh, focused on microplastics, uh, only, only the commercial, commercial microplastics are used for analysis. And there is a problem that uh, uh, that uh, commercial microplastics have uh, shape of spheres and their properties are not the same as the real microplastic in the environment uh, because in the environment microplastics can be uh, affected by UV radiation or abrasion. And so, uh, so for us, it is necessary to prepare microplastics under the real condition. First, we prepared microplastics by, uh, from, from uh, most commonly used uh, plastics. You can see this, uh, these kinds. Uh, for the preparation, we used uh, sandpaper, uh, grinding, a uh, corundum grinding stone, and electric grinder. In this uh, case of uses electric grinder, we we'll able to prepare a few uh, grams uh, of microplastics, uh, which we are used for, for characterization. Uh, degradation uh, by abrasion in, uh, in water environment and UV radiation was also tested. And uh, uh, due to the negative impact uh, of microplastics on organism, we are focused on uh, on possible and inexpensive way to remove uh, of microplastics from water, which can be used to scale up. First, uh, so characterization. You can see uh, photos for from scanning electron microscopy. Uh, there is a prepared uh, microplastic particles from the polystyrene in the middle is polyethylene and the last one is polypropylene. In all cases, you can see 
uh, particles with irregular shape and non-uniform size. Uh, the next characterization was Raman spectroscopy. Uh, first, we create a, a library of raw materials, and after it, uh, we measure our prepared microplastics. However, there is a problem that uh, that uh, when the the microplastic structure is broken, there is a there's uh, some luminescence, uh, which can, in some cases, uh, overlaps the characteristic peaks uh, from uh, from the structure from the structure of microplasts or plasts. Uh, the most visible is, is uh, effect of luminescence in the case when the prepared particles uh, was uh, were ir irradiate after UV radiation, this uh, uh, red line. And uh, also we tested micro FTI air metal, uh, which provides a, a be better uh, uh, spectra with better quality for small particles. And also with the combination micro FTI air and EDX analysis, uh, we can be able to determine and distinguish uh, some mixture of microplastics. We prepare my, uh, mixture of microplastics and analyze by combination this method, and it was verified. Uh, it was verified the the, uh, the individual plastics, for example, the red uh, particles. Uh, are the polytetrafluoroethylene and the blue uh, fibers are from uh, polyamide. Uh, furthermore, effect of UV radiation on the structure of microplastics over the, the time was investigated. You can see a few FTI spectra of polytetrafluoroethylene. Uh, uh, the exposure of UV radiation lasted for two months, and you can see a spectra during this time. Uh, the green one is the standard, and during the time you can see that uh, this uh, characteristic peaks changed. Uh, and eventually, after two, two months, they merged together. And uh, this is the reason why we <laughs> study this, because uh, this uh, changes uh, makes difficult to determination of uh, individual plastics. Uh, also, the effect of abrasion in aquatic environment uh, in aquatic environment uh, was also tested. You can see FTI spectra of polystyrene. Uh, from prepared uh, particles is the red, uh, red spectra. And the purple one uh, belongs to prepare microplastics after seven days of abrasion in water with abrasive material. And in this area, you can see some changes in spectra uh, where uh, possibly, um, possibly formation of uh, Carbon, carbon, carbon hydrogen bonds may occur. Uh, and the last point of my presentation is about uh, removal. Uh, a special glass column uh, was designed and built for our experiment based on the uh, textural characteristics uh, bentonite brandyane extra was used. But uh, there is a problem that uh, it was not possible to use uh, uh, crude bentonite because uh, its content uh, contains a uh, high amount of dust fraction. So it is necessary to modi modify them. Uh, we used uh, hydrodynamical separation of, uh, of, small, small, of the smallest particles. Uh, when the bentonite was mixed with water and stirred and uh, the smallest particle was removed uh, by single water. 
important. And also uh, we used uh, the light plane of telelite as a, as a support layer under the bentonite. Uh, the, uh, the combination, the, uh, the combination of this sorbent uh, prevent. Uh, sorry, uh, we tested uh, optimal ratio of uh, this uh, sorbents to ensure the optimal flow through the column. Now I move to the removal part. First, uh, we need to characterize the solution with microplastics. There you can see the amount of polycarbonate in a water solution. In this detail picture, you can see EVX analysis of these particles, and you can see that the particles are red. And figure 12 shows sample after, after dosing microplastic to the column. And after it, the column was uh, rinsed uh, by 100 liters of water. And from the this EDX analysis, you can uh, you can see the the particles, uh, the visible big particles, are originate from the sorbent. We also analyzed the used sorbent, and you can see evidence of uh, capture of microplastics. Uh, and uh, we obtain 98, more than 98% uh, uh, capture of microplastics. Uh, I would like to mention that uh, uh, based on our design, uh, it was uh, a built, uh, a built, a built plan, uh, which, uh, which is, which it uh, it has been testing now it has been testing in a water treatment plant in Podbaba. Uh, here you can see uh, the modification and of sorbent, and here is a column used for for the plastic removal, microplastic removal. Uh, finally, I would like to. Uh, quickly to summarize uh, um, our results, uh, we are able to prepare microplastic with, pop, uh, with proper, properties similar to microplastic in the environment. We characterized uh, prepared microplastics by scanning electron microscopy, uh, uh, which provides uh, some uh, some information about. Uh, about size and uh, structure of, uh, of particles by Raman spectroscopy and microFTI micro FTI spectroscopy, we obtain some spectra. Now we have been working on assembling the database of spectra for the detection of real microplastics. We also detected some changes in spectra by abrasion and UV irradiation. And the last point is about removal. Uh, the column contains uh, bentonite, bernyane, and zeolite clinoptilolite in a ratio 30% of, uh, of clinoptilolite and 70% of bentonite was successfully tested. And microplastic removal uh, is uh, more than 98%. And uh, it's all for me today, and I I want to tell uh, oh, thank. Oh, there will be a discussion. <laughs> okay, thank you for my research team, and and thank you, thank you for the attention. Thank you for the discussion. Thank you for the discussion. Thank you for the discussion. One question: If you would use uh, sand filter instead of your sorbent. If you try to prepare it, what would be the filtration efficiency? If you try to compare uh, just the sand with the same uh, particle size as your sorbent? Uh, well, maybe you are right, but uh, at the first we try to add some uh, some uh, some structure, uh, some structure modification to bentonite. 
but uh, eventually uh, the preparation is very uh, expensive, so we only use the crude or, mod or what to modificate the sorbent, but uh, maybe it's the uh, same line. No, my question same. is if you need the sorbent properties of the bentonite or if it's just physical filtration so that the particles are getting retained in the in the by the part, mm -hmm. by the yeah. particles or or if it's really if you really need the sorption properties of the expensive sorbent. Uh, but this is sorbent is very cheap okay. and it can be used for example in some buildings uh, yeah. industry and yeah. did, did you try to use the common sand instead of these uh, no. That's all right. No. Yeah. That's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Just, if you use these at the end you will have uh, these ferments full of microplastic. What will you do with them? Yes. <laughs> so uh, it can be burned or it can be added to some buildings uh, industry. Super. So you can use it for concrete. Yeah. Next question. When you did your experiments, uh, which parameters you were controlled? This is spoke about grinding with sandpaper or with some kind of drilling machine or whatever was it. Mm -hmm. What was the parameters you were having under control? Uh, for us, it's uh, necessary to prepare a larger amount. So by the sandpaper is very small amount. And for example, by the electric grinder is the amount of prepared microplastic is, uh, <laughs> is more than by sandpaper. But uh, the, the size of microplastic is between uh, 1.6 micrometers to 10 millimeters. So for us, it's uh, it's necessary to uh, to uh, some size. Or... Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I think the plastic is a problem. Uh, but have you tested the properties if it's a lipophilic or the hydrophilic uh, material? Because the plastic are burning on the air. Have you tested the surface properties of your microplastic that you have prepared in your Mm, thank you for a uh, uh, nice question. It's maybe some parameter when I focus on it. <laughs> Next step. Okay. Question about efficiency of the process. If you have so so wide range of uh, size of particles, uh -huh. there is a question that if we have only particles, for example, Smaller than five micrometers, the efficiency will be also so I did eight percent. Uh so uh I have uh the uh, the detection limit is um uh, from the stainless steel C which uh, placed under the apparatus which uh used for the sampling and uh, the mesh of uh, and the mesh of seed is, is uh, 10 micrometers. So under the 10 micrometers, uh, you can know it's... Uh, okay. Okay. okay, so the time is over, so I would like to send Presentation before coffee break. Should be given by Suspita Gulai, and her speech is related to utilization of microreactors for some valuable synthesis or reaction which can be utilized in protection of the environment, if I'm correct. <laughs> so the title of her talk is. Could you please share your? I, I think I share it. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So we can start, I think, very straight with your last but not least presentation. 
Good morning, everyone. Uh, today I will uh, shortly explain my uh, PhD uh, thesis paper, which is including the uh, slit geometry microreactor for uh, light induced photocatalysis with uh, graphite carbon nitride thin film. Uh, before I start with my presentation, I will explain the short background or outline with, with the background and the microreactor setup and uh, how I utilize uh, the uh, prepared nano graffiti carbon nitride material in microreactor setup and uh, its uh, catalytic applications. So the the main aim of these uh, articles or of this uh, research is to reduce the uh, environmental pollution due to huge uh, population growth and uh, the, we lose day by day the uh, renewable energy so uh, we just try to find out a solution to use the sunlight and simple the water we can utilize uh, this for or uh, the capturing or conversion the uh, energy, uh, we can generate the energy or create the heat by using only sunlight and the water. So uh, to uh, just think about this uh, concept, we just uh, uh, make a setup for the um, microreactor with uh, the nanomaterial, which I used here, graphite carbonated that I will explain later for the uh, overall uh, water splitting reaction, uh, which can be help us for the oxidation reaction also, and in the meantime, the reduction reaction. So in both uh, reaction can help us to give the, uh, the artificial uh, oxygen. It's like artificial photosynthesis. Uh, we can get the oxygen and also we can produce the hydrogen for the uh, power generate or some uh, alternate energy. <clears throat> so uh, this, uh, but so the thing, uh, the main things uh, to see this concept, we just, uh, use uh, the microreactor setup because this way the, the using the microreactor for water splitting reaction is completely the a new and very challenging um, concept for us so here we generally uh, prepared the uh, i'm sorry we generally prepared the uh, film uh, of uh, for for setup of this microreactor. There are very uh, sm small parts of uh, the reactors, uh, so uh, and which is very important for the uh, thin film uh, setup. Uh, here we basically used this uh, FTO glass or or quartet glass <laughs> for preparing carbon nitride uh, film that I used in microreactor setup, and also all these uh, setup is uh, each, each and every distance of this particular uh, of each and every uh, particular setup we used the photo micro reactor in 33.5 centimeter distance so why i use here my uh, graffiti carbon nitride because this uh, this kinds of material it is a completely uh, new uh, metal free nanomaterials that can be uh, carbon and nitrogen rich materials for a bit challenging to use it in microreactor setup and which we, we, we try to produce in this reaction, in the water splitting reaction in which will be continuously the both reaction can reduction and oxidation. So this, uh, this thin film setup of microreactors, uh, this nanomaterial uh, synthesis is basically some uh, carbon uh, nitrogen rich materials I used here for the uh, for synthesize of uh, carbon nitride which i where i use it uh, melamine and cellulose acids with uh, different uh, solvents water or ethanol kind of solvent and uh, this kind of structure is uh, the for the bulk uh, solid precursor i prepared after drying and this drying preparation we just heat it 550 generally for prepared carbon nitride it take 550 degree temperature we can 100 percent pure carbon nitride material uh, with their high surface area and different morphology with controlling and uh, it can be usable for catalytic applications 
So uh, why only 550 degree temperature we will prepare carbon nitrate? When we investigate that, uh, the temperature control, we here uh, use different uh, temperatures of calcination. After uh, preparing the uh, carbon and nitrogen and precursor, uh, <clears throat> we just uh, try to check it from 350 degree temperature to 650 degree temperature uh, in the nitrogen atmosphere for for four hours in the thermal condensation to just check their thermal and chemical uh, stability. So uh, this uh, is we investigate some characteristic application is which is the BAT most common and useful uh, <laughs> experiment which give us very nice uh, surface area when I use it in six degree temperature calcinated. So their surface area is most highest, but there is a problem. The problem means in micro reactor setup, when we use this powder, 60 period temperature powders, this is actually very, uh, their size, particle size is very high. So to remove the particle size for these micro reactor thin thin prepared, we used the ball milling process where particle size was removed almost 90%, which is, is under 0 0.75 microns the size. Then this uh, size carbon nitride, we are uh, very uh, easily and easily, we can prepare the thin film of this uh, glass setup. Also the another, also, this, uh, this uh, film investigate this SEM because the, the, at uh, 650 degree temperature calcinated carbon nitrate give us very floppy flower-like uh, morphologies. Uh, and uh, this one is uh, in when we use this PDF film, this uh, what that glass PDF film on this top is uh, this kinds of very floppy and flower-like shapes, which in the June space we can see this flower life space so the thickness the the thickness of these plates uh, of this carbon nitride film is approximately 27 micron then the another investigation of this uh, carbon nitride that uh, proved us that it's really uh, prepared carbon and nitrogen based material which is xps analyze and elemental analyze where is uh, proved that carbon and nitrogen they are creating uh, <coughs> very uh, sp2 and sp3 hybridized carbon carbon bond and carbon nitrogen double bond and single bonds for in case of carbon and also nitrogen so this clearly we have give us the strong statement that carbon nitride is prepared after calcination of 6 degree temperature and which is theoretically proved and then these types of material we used uh, the batch reaction of the micro reactor setup. This micro reactor setup we used actually mm, the different uh, circle. We did uh, these uh, batch reactions of this uh, dry carbonate material in photo micro reactor where we use the xenon lamp in uh, and the cycle of this uh, motor pump, the pressure was uh, 250 RPM and the distance from the light of the micro reactor was 33.5 centimeter. So we, I just here source only the rhodamine B degradation uh, results because we have also others, uh, many uh, organic degradation. Uh, so only the uh, rhodamine B degradation where the, the we are calculating the F constant and the kinetic constant. Just to compare with the micro reactor application only on just simple cuvette test, which is simply uh, we use light and cuvette and put there some samples and try to check it that uh, is there degrades or not. But the thing is that why we use, uh, because cuvette test is easiest test, but micro reactor is a very, uh, it's a very complicated instrument. So why we use this? Those there, we just saw that uh, when we use micro reactor, the specific the rate constant and end constant was uh, the was very high compared to cuvette test instead of uh, time irradiation. So that is the advantage of us to use these micro reactors. 
Mm, so we have also uh, left more, many more results. So now I am explained during the time. So up to now. So thank you so much uh, to everyone and also my supervisor, my uh, lab members, others, and also the uh, lab technicians. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Yes. Uh, yes, thank you yes. for this uh, contribution. Uh, I'd be interested, you spoke about using powders and uh, having problems with using powders in yeah. your micro reactor. Did you study the rheology of your suspensions? Yes, actually, uh, this uh, that car types of carbon nitrides I prepared, it is quite high and big, and before then it is problem for use directly. Okay, that is here. I shows one with the suspension because the micro reactor channel is very, very small. Exactly. Yeah. I'd be interested in, in rheology properties of your suspensions. Were they Newtonian? No. Were they, or did you study this? No, actually, I never use this powder directly because there is problem. I never use the powder directly. I prepared the film. Mm -hmm. In the uh, printing process, I prepared okay. the film. I use only film because we know that this micro reactor is very small, mm -hmm. and my car prepared carbon nitride is very big particles. This is impossible to use the powder direct. Mm -hmm. So that's why only we use the film. We prepare the film okay. and then we use it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question. <laughs> So uh, I will ask. So uh, you you will use your micro reactor system for removing of some contaminants from water. So that's the main aim of your PhD thesis. Or you will you will also make some synthesis. Uh, <coughs> because this is a big project. What, I... what is the main? let's say scientific the, aim of your thesis the main th this uh, synthesis characterization and this application in micro reactor part in micro reactor part we it is actually uh, i can't uh, without any help without any collaboration it is impossible to complete this project so we are collaborating also the other in university and my colleagues are helping me a lot about it so it's take time to figure out so this all this is a part of some yes. project yes yes oh. yes okay. thank you so if there is no question i would like to thank again to the audience for for discussion and now we'll have a break until 25 past 10 We'll start with the other morning session.